Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about William's claim to the throne. And, and where should I start? Well, I think that William's greatest claim to the throne is probably the Pope's endorsement. The Pope agreed to promote, well, promote, to support William's claim to the throne of England. Now, it wouldn't make too much difference now if the Pope now, in 2019, said something like that. But at the time, the Pope was supposed to be God's representative on earth and people fully believed that what the Pope said is what God wanted. If God didn't want it, he this person wouldn't be the Pope. That sort of thing. So they were, it, there was a lot of stock in if the Pope said it. And he effectively gives God's support, as in the eyes of many people, that William should be the King of England. These two things play into that, though, of course. Um, because... The, one of the big reasons why William could get the Pope's support is because Harold Godwinson went to Normandy um, just before the succession crisis in his what's called his embassy to Normandy, which is a strange term for it in, in my opinion, but that's what they call it in the textbook and the exam board, so that's what we're going to call it. Harold Godwinson's embassy to Normandy. He ended up in Normandy for whatever reason and William took advantage of it. He knighted Harold Godwinson, which you don't do to somebody who's higher higher than you in the social standings, which was a clever move. And it appears from the Bayou Tapestry that Harold Godwinson swore something with his hands on religious relics. Now that's serious. Swearing an oath on what might have been the bones of saints or something is a serious, serious thing if you then break that promise. Now, there's no real details on what that promise was, but you can guess that it was to support William's claim to the throne of Normandy, or maybe it was to to swear fealty to William, to swear that he is going to serve William, which is, amounts to the same thing. That's all right. Oh, <laughs> Mrs Reynolds just knocked. Have a lovely weekend, Mrs Reynolds. Thank you so much. But, Sorry for interrupting. No, that's all right. I sometimes sit in here talking to myself. They'll think it's funny on my video. OK, thank you. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs> thank you. Bye, sir. See you. Um... So because of that that so the the crime that he's guilty of by then breaking the promise and trying to become king and successfully becoming king himself is a guilt is guilty of perjury swear breaking an oath basically and that means the pope would want to support William because you know he's been promised on these religious relics also in 1051 and um, the Godwin family this is when Earl Godwin was still alive was kicked out of England by Edward the Confessor and the Normans say that it was at that time when William was promised the throne. There's no other confirmation of that. The Normans say it. And uh, it might be true that it, logic suggests it's a possibility, but it's certainly not a definite. And finally, we've talked about Edgar the Atheling having the strong relations to William of Normandy. Well, William is the only other one who, through blood, is related to Edward the Confessor, albeit distantly. Edward the Confessor's mum was called Emma of Normandy, so Edward was half Norman. It's quite significant. Um, and William's great granddad's sister was Emma of Normandy. I don't know what the relation that great great grand aunt uh, might be her in great grand nephew, maybe. No, that was right, great grand. I don't know. I'm totally. Totally stuck here. You wouldn't call him nephew because he's way older. Anyway, um, he's got some blood relation, even though it's even more distant than the very distant relation of Edgar the Atheling. Um, but William's main claim to the throne is that the Pope endorses his claim, which is huge.